Hello there and welcome to Marketing Edge on TV, Nigeria's leading initiative in the business of brand management and the management of brand business. It is a 30 minutes potpourri of brand news, brand in focus and industry conversation, all in a mix encompassing thorough and in-depth, all aimed at promoting the brand idea. I'm Ogalia B. Kelly Mafuru. It's insightful, it's exciting, it's enriching. It's Marketing Edge on TV, a half-hour TV show on the business of brand management and the management of brand business. Marketing Edge on TV is a potpourri of juicy and exclusive industry news on brands, advertising, media, PR, brand in focus, industry conversation, and the entire gamut of integrated marketing communications business. It's a business show with glamour and grandeur. We serve you hot and sizzling with all ingredients in the mix. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand ideal. Good to have you back. First on Marketing Edge on TV is brand news where we bring you the latest happenings and occurrences around brands and in the field of marketing, advertising and communication in Nigeria and around the world. Now on brand news. Former president of the Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria, Chipwe N. Mrs. Bumioke, has expressed worry over the objection of the advertising reform by some stakeholders. Speaking in an interview with Marketing Edge, the advertising experts, who blamed the lack of consensus for the new advertising framework on the absence of APCON governing council, said rejection would have been avoided if there was a governing council to deliberate extensively on the guidelines. According to her, a constituted council would have agreed and disagreed, then come up with a better resolution which no one would have the right to reject. The advertising icon, while commending the Registrar of the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria for the noteworthy initiative, affirmed that ISOP will bring some sanity to an insane situation but will require more dialogue for total acceptance. She urged the regulatory agency to engage more with stakeholders, especially advertisers, in order to see the merit in the new advertising guidelines. In collaboration with Ellen Business School and Academy Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria, Chipwe N, has launched a two-day thought-provoking advertising masterclass for top CEOs and senior executives. Tagged business approach to marketing communications, the interactive session is scheduled to hold in 2022 at a soon to be disclosed date. Registration can be done on the Academy website and the training fee is 200,000 Naira. Academy is a global education and innovative marketing communications academy formed to provide educational services that would teach deep strategic thinking skills and practical advertising craft that will help practitioners and prospects to become first-class professionals. Leading telecommunication company MTN Nigeria has disclosed that its voice and data revenue grew by 192.01 billion naira in the first nine months of 2021 to 1.09 trillion naira compared to the corresponding period in 2020. Commenting on the company's growth in the third quarter of 2021, the Chief Executive Officer Kyle Turiola said, in the first nine months of 2021, we continue to enhance the resilience of the business, improve our performance and make good progress towards our ambition 2025 strategy. The telecom boss, who said telecom ban in some locations in the nation has slightly affected some of the company's business activities, noted that creating shared value has become a strategic priority within its Ambition 2025 framework and will continue to deepen its support and partnerships in Nigeria. Unilever Nigeria PLC, leading fast-moving consumer goods FMCG company, has disclosed a turnover of 58.7 billion naira in the third quarter of 2021, as against 44.7 billion naira in the corresponding period of 2020. The company made this disclosure in a statement on its unaudited interim report for the period ended September 30th, 2021. According to the statement, the company recorded a gross profit of 15.9 billion naira in the period under review, up 61% from the 9.9 .9 billion naira reported for same period of 2020. Unilever reported a profit after tax 
of 1.08 billion naira in third quarter 2021 compared with a loss after tax of 2.6 billion naira reported for the corresponding period in 2020. Following a seven-month competitive pitch, which involved some of the world's biggest agencies, including Group M, Densul, and Avas Media, Facebook has announced Publicis Group SPAC Foundry has its global media buying and planning agency. The $750 million global media account was put up for review in March. The pitch, which included media buying and planning across Facebook's entire portfolio, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and Messenger was managed by ID Combs. According to Facebook, Spark Foundry will here on handle all its media planning and buying, strategic thought leadership, media innovation, cross channel approaches, tools, tech, and operations. Well, that was brand news. Next is Brandon Forecast after this break. size find it with the new etel data plans dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you airtel the smartphone network here today gone tomorrow Cause you follow till like the water And you promise what you don't know Sometimes it's right and then it's so wrong Them go do like say them why We promise you the world My brother all now was here Up on all of the open eye I should not be water, I can't be letter. Airtel, the smartphone network. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand ideal. Now on branding focus. Majority of COVID-19 pandemic restrictions has been lifted across the world and audiences have returned to outside spaces. After spending months indoors and consuming in-home digital media at a colossal scale, the reopening of hospitality and event venues is bringing back eyeballs to public spaces. So naturally, advertisers and agencies' confidence in out-of-home OOH ad buying will follow, especially digital out-of-home DOH, which has been undergoing an innovative programmatic field transformation while the world was stuck indoors. Advertisers accustomed to the one-on-one -on -one targeting possibilities of digital channels are always keen to improve the relevance of creative messaging and engagement with audiences at optimal times of the day or week that reflects the different needs and mindset of a given consumer. Typically, static ads have inherent limits to dynamic personalization, meaning ads can't be easily customized based on consumers' context. Advertisers and agencies are therefore eager for greater agility and customization to maximize the impact of their campaigns. For traditional OOH, industry research and environmental context are the primary elements of ad targeting, giving media buyers an estimation of where outdoor audiences might be on a regular basis. However, in an interconnected ecosystem, advertisers and agencies require a view of how campaigns perform across all channels, which is increasingly challenging for non-digital inventory, such as traditional OOH. 
In response to these expectations, programmatic capabilities for DOH advertising have emerged to balance the benefits of digital with unmistakable impact of outdoor advertising. Being able to deploy ads at optimal times means they can be aligned with not only peak audience movement, but real-world conditions as well. Programmatic technologies can collate movement and location data sources such as aggregated consented mobile IDs, first-party IDs, and third-party audience to inform ad targeting. To improve quality and accuracy of data available to advertisers fuels a performance boost in programmatic digital out-of-home by utilizing touch points throughout each step of the consumer journey. However, when it comes to devising omnichannel digital strategies, PDOOH delivers a distinctive, powerful overall media performance boost through a premium effect that amplifies the impact of search, social, and mobile enabled by the field optimization of budget between PDOOH and other online programmatic channels. With a clearer picture of audience movement, programmatic allows for greater movement capabilities and quantifies the effectiveness of PDOOH locations Advertisers therefore gain comprehensive insights into ad exposure, which in turn continuously feed into better planning and buying to drive campaign objectives. By bringing together a number of data sources and providing a better understanding of audiences, PDOH helps advertisers reach their target segments in the best time and place. What well, was branding focus? Nest is industry conversation where we interact with distinguished personalities who have been at the forefront of strategic positioning and promotion of brands. Well, last week we started a conversation with the lead consultant of Astel Integrated Marketing Limited, Mrs. Dolokbel Medebem. This week we will be continuing on that conversation after this break. <laughs> Get up to 60 gigabytes data free. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand ideal. So that's We're talking it. about experiential marketing. Would you say that um, it is harder compared to other, you know, aspects of marketing? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's something that I've done this since 2000, the year 2000. So that's 21 years. Mm -hmm. It's something personally I enjoy doing any form, any aspect. I mean, any aspect of experiential marketing. You'll find me down there doing something. So I enjoy it. I will not say it's hard for me. But because I'm wondering, I mean, I'm, what I'm wondering is what you mean by harder, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me say uh, more challenging. Would you describe it as such? Well, yes, somehow, somehow, maybe more challenging, if that's the word. Okay. Challenging in terms of, again, going back to value. Mm -hmm. Because um, if you look at it in, within the Macom's industry, advertising, everybody knows and understands. PR, everybody knows and understands. Media, everybody knows and understands. Then you talk about experiential marketing. And then you have to take a step back. <laughs> okay. What is experiential marketing? So how, uh, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Yes, yes, so I maybe think. that makes it a bit more challenging. Mm. Because then you, 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 first of all, it still goes back to that value because First and foremost, having understood what it is that you are offering to the client. 
and having let your client also understand the value that you're giving to them, then you don't have to start scrambling or stumbling to understand or to explain what you're offering. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Okay. So yes, if you look at it that way, it could be said to be a bit more challenging than all the others. But hey, we move. Okay. And what would you say is your company's um, competitive edge? Hmm. So part of it was, like I said, we partner with our clients. Mm -hmm. It's not an, it's not a master servant relationship. It's, it's, it's partnership. We come in believing that, I mean, it's not like ah, this is your money. This is your spend. We go out of our way to ensure that we're not red cross, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, it's not all about money. So we go out of our way to ensure our brand life, so to say. The team is young and everybody's passionate about what they do. And they are always, always ready to offer above and beyond. You understand. And at the end of the day, regardless of whatever it is, I believe that we're professionals. And we try as much as possible to to do the best within mm -hmm. the space that we're in. So how is your agency positioned in the marketplace? So right now we're a small agency. I mean, we're not, we're not gonna lie about that. We're a small agency, we're growing. The agency is three years old, 2018. We started full operations in 2019 and I believe that we're growing. Um, we're getting there. Sure we're getting there. <laughs> so. <laughs> so what would you say is your agency's strategic offerings to your clients this year? Although we're coming to, we're gradually, you know, um, getting to the end of the year. So this year, strangely, we've pretty much done more of, in terms of, just digital um, with our clients because then what one of the things that we're finding every day is that most times a lot of clients are coming in from the point of view of look I can't start thinking of and that's where I talked about collaborations earlier mm -hmm. I mean if if my client comes to me and says I want to get this done I want to get that done I'm not going to start saying no we don't do that no we don't do that I mean, immediately we start to think, so who are the partners that we have that do that? And we have quite a number of partners. So in terms of that, we've, we've tried to position ourselves in such a way that regardless of whatever it is, the opportunity, as long as it's within the marketing communication space, if it's something that we're unable to achieve, of course, whether or not we like it, we have partners that are positioned in various, on various levels to, 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 to deliver. So for us, our strategic offering essentially is regardless, we're here to deliver. We create experiences and we deliver. So regardless of what it is, as long as it's marketing communication, we're there. Well, the marketing and the advertising ecosystem is constantly evolving. What steps are your agency or is your agency taking? To prepare for this, uh, I think I'm sure I've answered that different times at this point in within this conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last, the last, the last um, bit really mm -hmm. is that, like I said, we position ourselves in such a way that regardless of whatever it is that the the client is after within the marketing communications industry, we position ourselves in such a way that we have partners that work as us, and mm -hmm. we also have partners that we work as them. You understand? I mentioned collaborations. Right now, survival is such that it's not about, oh, we're Ashton Integrated Marketing Limited or whatever. Survival is such that, look, Tolu, I've got this activation that I need to run. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. You understand? And we run it. I run jobs where Asta's name doesn't come up mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. I do that because I'm collaborating with someone okay. and that's it. Well, um, the um, APCON just recently kicked off um, its um, advertising industry standard of practice. Uh, what would be your thoughts about it? So that is, I mean, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm so excited about it because now we've been talking about marketing communication industry and all of that. You've been talking about experiential marketing being challenging and all of this is part of it. X-Man came fully into Apcon last year, thanks to our president then, um, Mr. Tadi Arikuli. And I mean, it's been something that has been on right from the inception of X-Man. All the past presidents have been working on that. But of course, you know that there was no X-Man committee set up until recently with um, Dr. Fadalapo. And at that, I mean, when he came in, X-Man moved in there 100% and everything was done. What has happened now is that X-Man is well positioned as, as a industry, industry player under AppCon. Okay. Right now, I have an AppCon registration as X-Man, as, um, as Asta Integrated Marketing. And that means that I can practice experiential marketing because I'm covered by AppCon. Okay. Subsequently, based on the ISPON that was recent, I think that was the 6th of October, yes. all sorts of communiques are going out where we're going to be speaking to all multinationals in terms of the regulations that have come into play. And like I said, I was excited about it because it's a welcome development. That means that a lot of things hopefully would come into play. So we begin to self-regulate. Hopefully. We'll change. We'll change. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. Well, before you go, I'd like you to talk to us about you. Me. Mm. <laughs> so what's there to say about me? So of course my name is Tolu, Tolu Lope Medebem. Um, I'm a mother of three lovely girls. I'm married to an evil man. So people always ask me, three girls, an evil man, how? Hey, we have three girls. We're very happy and content with them. And my husband would always say, regardless of whatever it is that you do, even if you keep trying, you always have girls. Oh, so we've okay. never tried. My last born is 18, I think. Mm -hmm. So no trying again. Um, like I said, I've been in this industry since the year 2000. Um, I love traveling, I, which we can't do, but I've made up my mind to explore Nigeria mm -hmm. as well. So that's traveling as well. Um, and strangely, I've actually been to almost all states of Nigeria. Oh. But now we start to explore Nigeria for tourism purposes. Okay. So um, what else? I'm married to an Igbo man. I have three daughters. I'm a mother. So I have um, two NGOs that I'm trying to run. It's not an NGO per se. It's um, there's Bands with T. It's a mental wellness program. It's kind of like a podcast and a blog and um, not just the nature essentially what that is is trying to to groom young people and i use the word young people because that's what we're trying to do to groom human beings regardless of whether you are male or female mm. i mean we have so many challenges we're talking religion we're talking male and female we're talking if we are all well adjusted human beings i'm not sure we'll have all this diversity in culture i went to a federal government college so right now, I find it strange because 99.9% .9 of my friends are from all over. When we were in federal government college, then you didn't know if somebody was a Muslim or Christian. You didn't know if somebody was Hausa, Igbo, or Yoruba. We all were just in school. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. And then now we're having all sorts of ethnic issues and all of that. And you're asking yourself, what's going on? How did we get here? Exactly. That's the word. How did we get here? But strangely, you didn't talk about your broadcast uh, background. Uh, when I look through your profile... <laughs> <laughs> Why did you skip that part? <laughs> so, so strangely, that's what my father, my father, he is um, the late um, Obafunsha Jolu. And I mean, somehow, I think somehow we all thought I was going to go into some form of broadcasting. I served with Clink Studios years ago and I worked on um multi-choice mnet new directions all of that i need to know and all of that but and my first my first encounter with experiential marketing actually happened from there because in clink studios where i served i i had this um guy who used to come in i used to edit for him and all of that and one of those days he came at me and said to me you're going to work with me and that was how i left after my service here i went with him and started working with him 
Then I went into AIT. I worked in AIT for X number of years. So 1998 when I got married. Okay, so two or three years in AIT. Then the same guy from Clink that I went to work with after I left NYC now calls me one day and says, I need to see your husband. I need to see your husband as how was the problem. This is years after, although we keep in contact with touch and also. So he drives down to my house and he sits down and says, Ah, doctor. I want Tolu to work for me. And I looked at him like, are you all right? <laughs> you want Tolu to work for you? You are talking to Dr. Shogbanjo Baisha, you know? And he was like, so I announced how my, my, my career in experiential marketing started in 2000 with Marathon Events. It was um, an affiliated company with Octagon in South Africa then. And here yeah, I am today, 21 years after. Doing very well. <laughs> I must say thank you for having this time out with us on Industry Conversation. Thank you it so was much. a very interesting one. I hope it was. <laughs> and I hope it made <laughs> hope sense. Hope we have more opportunities to I look forward it. to it, actually. <laughs> it's insightful. It's exciting. It's enriching. It's Marketing Edge on TV. A half hour TV show on the business of brand management and the management of brand business. Marketing Edge on TV is a potpourri of juicy and exclusive industry news on brands, advertising, media, PR, brand and focus, industry conversation, and the entire gamut of integrated marketing communications business. It's a business show with glamour and grandeur. We serve you hot and sizzling with all ingredients in the mix. Marketing Edge on TV, promoting the brand ideal. Well, that's much we can take on Marketing Edge on TV. Do well to join us again for another interesting time of the program. Same time next week. I'm Ogalia Bikele Mafuru. Bye for now.